My Weird School, Book Number Four. Miss Hana is Bananas, written by Dan Gutman, pictures by Jim Pellot. Chapter One. I hate Andrea Young. Miss Daisy, AJ hit me. I did not. I said, he did too. He bumped his elbow against my elbow. Andrea Young is so annoying. I barely touched her stupid elbow. She was moaning and holding her arm like an elephant stepped on it. I wish an elephant would step on her head. Andrea has been bothering me since we were little kids, and that's a long time because now we're in second grade. I saw AJ do it to Miss Daisy," said Emily. "She is Andrea's friend and is just as annoying, but in a different way." Am I going to have to send anyone to Mr. Klutz's office? Miss Daisy asked. Mr. Klutz is the principal, and that means he is like the king of the school. No, me and Andrea said. Good, because it's time for us to go to art class. I don't want you to miss it. Our art teacher, Miss Hana, is really nice, and I'm sure she has some fun activities planned for you. Art, I said. I hate art. Oh, you hate everything, AJ," said Andrea, who thinks she knows everything. It just so happens that I do not hate everything. I don't hate football. I don't hate skateboarding. I don't hate trick biking. I don't hate monster movies, especially when the monsters crush cars and stuff. But I do hate school, and I especially hate Andrea. I love art, Andrea announced, like anybody really cared. She took out a big art box she had brought from home. It had crayons and colored pencils and other stuff in it. When I grow up, I want to be an artist. My mom thinks I'm really creative. I like to create things. She should create an empty space where she is right now. I whispered to my friend Ryan. Who sits in the row next to me? Ha 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 ha! Ryan laughed, but Miss Daisy made a mean face at him, and he shut up. Let's go, second graders," she said. Single file to the art room. Miss Hana is waiting for us. Drawing pictures is for babies, if you ask me, and art is stupid. Chapter Two, Finger Painting with Miss Hana. Emily was the door holder. My friend Michael, who never ties his shoes, was the line leader. The art room was all the way on the other side of the school. We had to walk about a million hundred miles to get there. Michael told Miss Daisy it was like walking across the Grand Canyon, so she let us take drinks from the water fountain outside the art room. That's where Miss Hana was standing. She was the funniest-looking lady I ever saw. She was wearing a dress that looked like it was made from a bunch of different colored washcloths. That were sewed、so、together. On her hands were these big mittens that my mom uses when she has to take hot dishes out of the oven. Miss Hana looked weird. Good morning, second graders. She said as we filed into the art room. 
Do you like my new dress? It's made from used potholders that I bought on eBay. I stitched them together. Miss Hannah spun around so we could get the full effect of her new dress. It's beautiful, Andrea said. She is always complimenting, that's a big word, grown-ups on everything. Andrea was born old. Personally, I thought it was the stupidest looking dress in the history of the world. I went to sit with my friends, Michael and Ryan, but Miss Daisy stopped us. She told Miss Hannah that certain people should not sit next to other certain people. I knew what that meant. Boy, girl, boy, girl, Miss Daisy said, pointing to where we should sit. I had to sit at a table between Andrea and her crybaby friend Emily. Miss Daisy gave each of us a name tag to wear so Miss Hannah would know our names. Then she told Miss Hannah she would be in the teacher's lounge in case there was any trouble. The teacher's lounge is where the teachers go when they don't have to teach. I've never been in there. No kid has ever been in there in the history of the world because kids aren't allowed inside. The teacher's lounge is like a secret clubhouse for teachers only. My friend Billy from around the corner, who was in second grade last year, told me that they have big parties in the teacher's lounge all day long. He said the teachers dance around and play pin the tail on the donkey and eat cake and take target practice with BB guns. Then they try and think up new punishments to give us kids when we misbehave. That sounds cool. Maybe when I grow up, I'll be a teacher so I can hang out in the teacher's lounge all day and have fun. After we sat at our tables, Miss Hannah took off her potholder mitts and picked up a piece of black paper. Can anyone tell me what this is? She asked. Any dumb head knows that. I raised my hand and she called on me. It's a piece of black paper, I said. Duh. It could be a piece of black paper, AJ, Miss Hannah said. But maybe it's a black cat in a coal mine. Maybe it's a crow flying in the middle of the night. It was a trick question. I hate trick questions. My ears felt like they were on fire. I didn't look at anybody, but I knew everybody was looking at me and laughing to themselves. It wasn't fair. That stupid thing was a plain old piece of black paper. And everybody knew it. It looks like a piece of black paper to me, my friend Ryan said. Whew! I knew I could count on Ryan. I turned around and gave him the thumbs up sign. I want you to open your imagination, second graders, Miss Hannah said. Art is everything and everywhere. It's all around us. We are all artists. A dentist is an artist. Your mouth is your dentist's canvas. A man fixing a roof is an artist. You can be an artist too. Not me, I thought to myself. Art is stupid. Miss Hannah put a big sheet of newspaper in front of each of us to cover the table. She took a bunch of old t-shirts out of the closet and gave one to everybody to wear, so we wouldn't get paint all over ourselves. Then she put paint in the middle of all the tables and gave each of us a piece of white paper. Today we are going to finger paint, she said. 
I'm not painting my fingers, I said. Some of the kids laughed, even though I didn't say anything funny. You silly dumbhead, Andrea said. Finger painting is when you use your fingers to paint pictures. I knew that. Andrea thinks she knows everything. What should we paint? Emily asked Miss Hannah. Anything you like. Express your creativity. Paint what you love. I love butterflies. Andrea said. I'm going to finger paint a picture of a happy family of butterflies. I'm going to finger paint a picture of a tree in a forest where your butterflies can live," said Emily. "I'm going to finger paint a picture of a tree falling in a forest and crushing a family of happy butterflies until they are dead," I said. "That's mean," Emily said. She looked like she was going to cry. Like she does in every stupid little thing. Hey, I'm just expressing myself. I said. I turned around and saw that Ryan was finger painting an airplane. Michael was finger painting a house. Everybody was hard at work finger painting. The finger paint looked yucky to me. I didn't really want to get it all over my hands. It was disgusting. I just sat there watching everybody finger paint. My piece of paper was the only one that was perfectly white. Why aren't you finger painting, AJ? Emily whispered to me. Mind your own business, dumbhead. Miss Hannah, Andrea called out. AJ isn't finger painting. Andrea is a big tattletale. She stuck out her tongue at me as Miss Hannah came over to our table. AJ, you haven't finger painted a thing, Miss Hannah said. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. I had to think fast. I did two finger paint something. I said, "This is a picture of a white." Polar bear, he's playing in the snow, white snow, and he's eating vanilla ice cream. All the kids were looking at me. Miss Hannah was looking at me. I was afraid she was going to yell or go get Miss Daisy from the teachers' lounge to take me to the principal's office. Very nice finger painting, AJ. Miss Hannah said, with a big smile on her face, "That's using your creativity." Ha ha ha! I stuck my tongue out at Andrea. She folded her arms across her front, all mad-like. It was great. It was not only great. It was the greatest moment in the history of the world. This was the next best thing. To an elephant stepping on Andrea's head. Pretty soon, it was time to clean up. Miss Hannah taught us a song about cleaning up. The words were, "Clean up, clean up, everybody everywhere. Clean up, clean up, everybody do their share." It was a pretty dumb song, and me and Michael and Ryan changed the words to. Clean up, clean up, even in your underwear. Any time anybody says a word that rhymes with air, you should always change it to underwear. Everybody will laugh. Believe me, this works every time. Miss Hannah peeled the sheets of painty newspaper off our desks and stuck them on a ball that was sitting on the windowsill. The ball was about the size of a beach ball. What are you doing, Miss Hannah? Michael asked. I'm making a newspaper ball, she said. Why? We all asked. 
old newspapers with paint all over them can be art. This is my art. Like I said, art is everywhere. And this way, nothing goes to waste. I don't like waste. If you look around, you'll see that I don't even have a garbage can in here. We looked around. It was true. There was no garbage can in the art room. Miss Hannah didn't need a garbage can because she never threw anything away. That reminds me, Miss Hannah said. For our next class, I would like you all to bring in things from home that your parents weren't planning to throw away. What for? So we can make them into art. I was still looking around for a garbage can. She had to have a garbage can somewhere. Everybody needs a garbage can. It's a shame when people throw things away, Miss Hannah said. Everything in the world is beautiful. Everything can be used to make some kind of art. Well, I just blew my nose, I said, holding out a tissue. Does that make my boogers artistic? Everybody laughed, even though I didn't say anything funny. Miss Hannah took my tissue and stuck it to her big newspaper ball. It was disgusting. Chapter 3 Weird People In the lunchroom, I got to sit next to Ryan and Michael. I gave my apple to Ryan, and he gave me his yogurt with sprinkles in it. Miss Hannah is weird, I said. Artists are always weird, Ryan said. My mom has a friend who's an artist, and she's really weird. My mom says that's because artists are creative. Your mom is weird, Michael said. Lots of people are weird, I told them. That doesn't make them creative. Some people are just weird and they're not creative at all. And some people are creative and they're not at all weird. You're weird, AJ, Ryan said. Anybody who wears a dress made of potholders is weird, Michael said. Our teachers are supposed to dress funny, I said. If my dad dressed like that, he'd be fired, Ryan said. Your dad is a businessman, Michael told Ryan. He has to wear a tie around his neck every day. It doesn't do anything. It's just a piece of cloth that hangs around his neck. If you ask me, that's pretty weird. Yeah, I said. Which is weirder, wearing a dress made out of potholders or wearing a piece of cloth around her neck for no reason at all? They're both weird, Ryan said. All grown-ups are weird, especially our teachers, said Michael. Miss Hannah is weird, even for an art teacher, I said. I noticed that Andrea and Emily at the next table were listening to us. I knew they were listening because they kept shaking their heads and rolling their eyes and snickering at us. Maybe Miss Hannah isn't really an art teacher at all, I said, just loud enough so the girls would hear it. Did you ever think about that? Maybe she's just pretending to be an art teacher. Yeah, Michael said. Maybe Miss Hannah is a thief and she is trying to steal all our garbage and take over the world. Stuff like that happens in comic books all the time. Maybe our real art teacher was kidnapped. And she's tied up to a chair in the teacher's lounge, Ryan said. And the teachers are shooting BB guns at her, I added. We've got to save her, Emily suddenly said. There were tears running down her cheeks. Then she got up and went running out of the room. 
Me and Ryan and Michael laughed our heads off. That Emily is such a crybaby. You boys are weird, Andrea said. Chapter four. What a mess! The next time we had art class, the newspaper ball that Miss Hannah had been making was huge. It was about as high as a desk. Everybody wanted to touch it. Everyone except for me, that is. I remembered that somewhere inside that ball was my booger. The art room was filled with all kinds of junk kids brought in from home. There were old musical instruments, broken toys, soda cans, plastic wrap, and all kinds of garbage. You should have seen it. Some kid brought in a tennis racket with no strings. What a mess! Emily said. If my bedroom looked like this, my mom would go crazy. Michael said. You should throw half this stuff in the garbage. Miss Hannah, oh dear, no! She said, "I don't like to throw things away. In fact, at home, the garbage men bring me garbage so I can use it in my art. When I have a day off, I go to junkyards looking for treasures." Miss Hannah is bananas. She had some sticky glue that sticks to everything. She told us to make a sculpture out of the junk kids brought in from home. Express yourself, Miss Hannah said. Show your creativity. Remember, art is everywhere. Art is light. Art is air. Even things that are invisible can be art. Michael started making a robot out of toilet paper tubes. Emily made a doll out of buttons. I didn't know what to make. I think I'm just not very artistic. I didn't feel like gluing a bunch of junk together. Miss Hannah walked around, looking at every one's sculptures, and telling them how wonderful they were. I hoped Miss Hannah wouldn't come over to me. AJ isn't making a sculpture," Andrea said, and she stuck her tongue out at me. "I hate her. Why aren't you making anything, AJ?" I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. I had to think fast. I did make a sculpture," I said. "This is an invisible sculpture. I call it the invisible sculpture." Very clever, AJ," Miss Hannah said. "That's using your creativity." I stuck out my tongue at Andrea. "I have an announcement, second grade," Miss Hannah said after cleanup time. "Mr. Klutz has agreed to sponsor a big art contest. There will be a prize for the winner in each grade." What's the prize? Ryan asked. A gift certificate for a hundred dollars to an art supply store. Everybody went ooh and wow. It didn't seem like a great prize to me. I don't like art. What would I do with a bunch of art supplies? Miss Hannah said we had to create our artwork at home, and bring it in two weeks later if we wanted to be in the contest. You can make anything you like, Miss Hannah said, and use whatever materials you want. Freely express yourselves. Creativity is the most important thing. Can we just draw pictures? Michael asked. Of course, said Miss Hannah. I hope I win. I heard Andrea whisper to Emily. I'm going to make a sculpture with butterflies. 
I hate her. I wonder if there are poisonous butterflies that bite people. So who thinks they might enter the contest? Asked Miss Hannah. Everybody raised their hands except for me. What about you, AJ? I didn't say anything, but I'll tell you what I was thinking. I hate art. Art is stupid. Chapter Five: The Secret of the Teacher's Lounge. We were out in the playground during recess. Me and Ryan and Michael all agreed that Miss Hannah was weird. I mean, saving all that garbage is good for the environment and all, but it's kind of weird too. She doesn't have enough garbage of her own. She has to go get other people's garbage. She's not an art teacher, I said. She's a garbage collector. I still say our real art teacher was kidnapped, Ryan said. She's probably tied up to a chair in the teachers' lounge. The teachers' lounge is on the second floor of our school. Ryan said he thought it was in a room over the playground. We looked up at the windows and found the one that was probably the teachers' lounge. Our real art teacher could be in there right now. Ryan said. Tied up to a chair and being tortured. Too bad we're too short to see inside. Michael said. That's when I came up with the most genius idea in the history of the world. I told Ryan and Michael that we might be able to see inside the window to the teachers' lounge if we stood on top of each other. Michael got down on his hands and knees below the window. Ryan climbed up on top of him and hunched down. I climbed up on top of Ryan and stood on his shoulders. Can you see anything, AJ? Michael grunted. Not yet. I could almost see into the window. I grabbed hold of the ledge on the window. To pull myself up better. Hurry up, Michael said. My back is going to break. That's when I saw them, the teachers. I saw Miss Daisy and Mrs. Rupi and a few of the other teachers. I was looking right into the teachers' top secret lounge. I see them! I shouted. What are they doing? Ryan asked, all excited. Not much, I said. Is anybody tied up to a chair? Michael asked. No. Are they dancing around with each other? Ryan asked. No. Are they playing pin the tail on the donkey? Michael asked. No, I said. They're just sitting there. Eating lunch, that's it," Ryan said. "Wait," I told them. "Mrs. Rupi is getting something out of the closet. Is it a BB gun?" Michael asked. "No, it's a paper bag," I said. "It must be her lunch." "This is boring," Ryan said. "One more minute," I said. My back is breaking," Michael hollered. "I don't know exactly what happened next, but all I knew was that Ryan and Michael weren't holding me up anymore. Nothing was holding me up anymore. I was holding onto the ledge of the window sill with my elbows. If I let go, I would fall." I was afraid my head would bang on the window sill. Help! Help! I shouted. I was hanging there for about a million hundred minutes until some of the teachers inside the teachers' lounge noticed me. 
they rushed over and opened the window. AJ, what are you doing out here? Miss Daisy said as she and the other teachers pulled me inside. Uh, I was just hanging around, I told them.